Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials, as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So in the past few months, I've really been wanting to get more into making realistic cakes, but I haven't had many opportunities to do so. So my colleague's birthday was coming up, and I decided I'm going to make a realistic cake for my colleague. Now, what was I going to make? Well, I decided that I needed to keep it relatively small since this was really only going to be one person eating the cake. So I made a really small, Four inch cake and then I went to HomeSense and I thought what other gift could I give to her that would also be good to make into cake and this plant here was perfect so I decided that I was going to recreate this now at this point in the process things were going relatively smoothly and was fairly easy the only thing was that this cake was a little bit crumbly the reason is is because I was using gluten-free cake since my colleague has some dietary restrictions so I wasn't using my regular all-purpose flour recipe which did cause a bit of crumbling, but really wasn't that big of a deal. However, when I reached the bottom portion of the vase, that's when I really started to run into trouble. I just couldn't get my brain to wrap around how I was supposed to make these geometric shapes. I knew if I could just nail it one time, then I'd be able to recreate that over and over again all the way around, because this is a very symmetrical vase. And it did take me quite a while to think about it. And I did crumb coat this, cut pieces out, and then I had to crumb coat again. Really, it's up to you. There are no rules when it comes to carved cakes. I say that a lot because really, there are no hard and fast rules. So if you want to crumb coat first, do that. If you want to cut things out first, do that. And by the way, for your reference, I am using American buttercream and we're going to be using satin ice fondant today. So here I'm just creating that kind of gray marbled look. And again, I don't know why, but I kept messing up this portion. So really when you're creating this fondant, what you want to do is you want to knead it as little as possible. So you knead the two colors first separately, whatever two colors you're using, put a little bit of shortening in there as well. And then you want to very carefully put the two pieces together, but don't really knead them together or else they're just going to amalgamate into one color and then go ahead and roll it out. Now we really just need a very, very small amount. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm measuring out how big the panels need to be. Now you can attach your fondant in a couple of different ways. You can either use a little touch of shortening, a little bit more frosting, or you can also steam your cake. Any of those will work. Now, I will say if you are going to be using frosting, that's a little bit more challenging, especially if you're using a brown frosting like this, because you might end up getting frosting all over your fondant. So generally, I say steam or use shortening. Now here I'm using a paneling technique, using that pastry cutter to make sure that I get nice, even symmetrical pieces. Upon reflection, I might have been able to actually get away with just creating one long piece of fondant and wrapping that around the cake and then going through and indenting with a bench scraper like you're going to see that I do later on. The reason that I chose this approach though is because I really wanted to make sure that I was getting those details and that they were nice and squared off. I'm not sure if it would have ended up as squared off if I did it the other way, but definitely it's worth trying on the next project. You can see that I'm using my bench scraper to really get those indents nice and clean. And I'm also using two, not just one, but two fondant smoothers here. I used to function with just one fondant smoother. I've now come to realize it's a lot easier to have two. That way your hand with a glove, or if you're not wearing gloves, won't imprint the side of your fondant. Now, this was the tricky part again, that bottom portion of this particular vase was really tripping me up. So I cut out different pieces that were of this shape and I kind of had to guess at the shape and then just kind of tuck it in. I really felt like I was faking this bottom portion. Somehow it does end up turning out fairly geometric and fairly sharp, but maybe there's other techniques I could have tried to to get this a bit sharper. I thought it was pretty good though. And yes, if you're wondering, I did regret choosing a container that had all of this bottom edge like this. I should have just gone for the containers that were just a straight cylinder. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, this part took a long time, like hours, and it really shouldn't have. But that's what happens when you're trying out new things and new techniques. So if you guys have watched any of my cake decorating or cookie decorating videos before, you know I will often take my edible colorants and just use them as edible paints. And it does do the job, but I must say, this time around I'm using actual edible paint and it's working really, really nicely. The consistency and the quality is beautiful. I just wanted to brighten up this white a little bit. 
Again, like I said, I was struggling with my marbling technique in the first place. Had I nailed it the first time around, I probably wouldn't need to go back and paint it, but I was really, really happy with how I was able to create this marbling texture. I took some white and just haphazardly placed it all over the cake and then what I did was I went in with that really thin brush and I used a little bit of black and then I used the same paintbrush that I used for the white to kind of draw out that color to make it look a little bit more natural like marble looks. Then I used a little bit of green airbrush just to cover that top portion. And yes, that is exposed buttercream on the top there. Now we're going to make some edible glue. And normally I just steam my cakes or use water to attach things. But because we actually have to attach this to a wire, we do need to make that edible glue. And that's basically done by mixing Tylos powder and some warm water. Let it set for a bit. It will dissolve and become less chunky. And if I thought the actual cake portion took a long time to come together, this took forever. In the time that it took me to make all of these leaves, my children were able to go to the park, play more imaginative games, and also eat their dinner. It took a long, long time. You have been warned if you try this at home. Now to make the leaves is relatively simple. So if you just put a TV show on, you'll be able to get through this. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a little small piece of fondant, you make it into a rounded shape, you flatten it out, and I'm just putting it on this little veining pattern leaf there, but you really don't even need that if you don't want to. It honestly would look pretty realistic as well if you just put kind of a vein right down the center and you could use an X-Acto knife or whatever other thing that you can use at your disposal to create that kind of center line and you just want to use a dab of edible glue to attach it to this floral wire here that's all I'm using for this by the way and the reason I say a dab of edible glue is because if you use more than that sometimes it ends up completely sliding off and you won't be able to get those to stay now I would say you need these to dry for a little bit but honestly with the amount of time that it takes to complete all of these it'll pretty much be dry and ready to go. So as you can see I haven't airbrushed them yet. I stabbed them all in there without them airbrushed because I don't want to have to move things around when they've been freshly airbrushed. This is me trying to expedite the process as much as possible. I rather do this and take a little bit of saran wrap or a plastic wrap and place it around just to protect your creation. We're going to use a bunch of different greens. This is what's going to create create that realistic look for you. And after all of that tedious work, this is so satisfying and so fun and you deserve an easy job after this. This kind of has like a yellowish tinge to it. It's really not going to be the main color that we're going to see. We're just going to see little pops of this yellow and be a little bit sparing with that and be sparing as well when you're doing this portion too where we're using a little bit of the darker green and you'll notice that I'm kind of using my glove as a barrier. I love airbrushing now with gloves on. That way I can protect my skin a little bit more. When you are using your airbrush, if you haven't used one a lot, I generally just kind of brush the trigger a little bit. I never hold it all the way down or else too much color gets deposited. So after many, many hours, here is our plant cake. I love it. And when I presented it to my colleague, she loved it as well. Now I did have to secretly gift it to her, but pretty sure she knows it was me. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video. How cute is this little bunny cake? And I really gotta hand it to you guys. I have just been so, so grateful for all of your support. So definitely go and drop them a like and drop them a comment. And if you wanna be the next featured subscriber submission of the video, then please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!